I had a woman reach out to me a while back on Facebook. It was on one of the missing persons pages on Facebook and was having a conversation in the comments with her about a missing man. And she sent me a link and some information about him and I told her that I would do a video about him. And of course it I gathered some information that I could find online about him and was preparing the video and had it in queue, had it loaded up to put it on here and I had to do some editing to it. And in the meantime, this story came out just a few days ago. Now this is an ongoing case. This was posted June the 9th of 2023, so it's rather recent. This is on WYMT from Hazard, Kentucky. The family of Ricky Griffiths believes that even almost a year after his disappearance, he will be found alive. Griffiths was last seen in the Burnside community around Independence Day of 2022. A series of strange text messages followed by his car, wallet, and phone being found have only raised more questions. Um, officials with the Wayne County Sheriff's Department believe foul play to be a strong possibility, but four polygraph tests have led to few leads. Now, this was just posted on Facebook just today, or I just I just saw it today. I don't know when it was posted, but they are bringing in a new search team to try to find him. The Cajun Coast Search and Rescue Team, which was also used in the search, for Savannah Spurlock in 2019 is planning to be in Kentucky early next week to help search for Ricky Griffiths. So I just wanted to add that little editorial to this video and um, then I will, you can watch the rest of the video and, and learn this man's story. I just wanted to do that little follow up or lead, lead segue into this story because and I do apologize to this woman that it took me a couple of m a month or two since we talked to get this video prepared to post. And um, it's it's hard to say you hope that they find somebody because it's a very good possibility that they may not find them alive. But I hope that they do find him alive. The family believes him to be alive. Maybe they think he's in hiding because of some encounter that he had with somebody or some stuff that had been going on in his life. But you can listen to this story and see what you think. And before I end, I'll say in advance, thanks for watching. Is um, Missing People in Kentucky is the name of the Facebook page. And she told me about this story because um, they had posted about a guy that I had covered in one of my videos recently and they were talking about him so she told me about this person and she said that he is from her hometown this is published october 11th 2022 from wymt news um wayne county kentucky a southern kentucky family is looking for answers in a missing person case ricky griffiths griffiths was last seen on july the 4th however in the days after his family said he made some strange phone calls officials later found his car wallet and cell phone but there was no signs of him the wayne county sheriff said foul play is suspected his mother alice mabe says god is going to do justice to the ones who did this i'll leave that in god's hands Maybe, maybe, Mabe said the last text message she got from her son's phone was very unusual. She believes that he was with the wrong group of people and she does not think he will be found alive. We just need to know the truth, she says. We want to know where he is. We've been given false leads and told lies. She said her son was involved in drugs, but she added that he had gotten treatment and was home clean. Now he has not come home at all. I sat on my porch and thanked the Lord for giving me my son back. And then these criminals, these wicked people, 
take him away. The devil stepped in and took him away. However, she said she is thankful for the support she has gotten from her community. I have people who have stopped and prayed with me, she says. Wayne County Sheriff Tim Catron said evidence is still being gathered. If you have any evidence or any information, please contact the Wayne County Sheriff. It doesn't give a phone number, but I will look. Ricky Griffiths, 46, missed work. His family got a text message that said, Stuck in the woods. His car was found in the Coopersville strip mine. July the 4th of 2022. Um, the sheriff said Griffiths did not show up for work, and his family got a text message on July the 5th saying he was stuck in the woods, but they've had no other contact from him. Um, you are asked to call the Wayne County Sheriff's Office at 606-384-5416. WYMT, which is another news station in Kentucky. Uh, July the 13th, questions are being raised after a southern Kentucky man made some strange phone calls and then disappeared. That's the situation surrounding the case of Ricky Griffiths. His family fears foul play. His family is at their wit's end with many questions about what took place. They believe something happened last week. That's the last time they had communication from him. Uh, someone on here commented that they couldn't think of any active strip mines, so they had gone and looked it up to see what if they could find any active working strip mines in the area where he would have been. But it's not necessarily that the strip mine was active. A lot of people go back onto these strip mine roads. A lot of people ride four-wheelers, side-by-sides, jeeps. Uh, some people walk on them, just hike. And some people go back in there to drink and hang out and party or whatever. But... Um, why why he would have gone and just said he got stuck in the woods. That could have been something that someone did to try to throw people off. So it would kind of maybe account for why he didn't show up. Because somebody would say, well, he messaged me and said he was stuck in the woods. Most people, if they really were stuck in the woods, they would say, I'm stuck in the woods at this location. Can you come help? Deputies say they got a call on Wednesday evening from the family of Ricky Griffiths. Griffiths. Family says they were in contact him, contact with him on Tuesday morning. Um, that's really all there is. And then it just gives the sheriff's... Um, but now the Facebook page. Prayers for all and that Ricky Griffiths is found. There is Justice for Ricky Griffiths page. His parents, sister, children, and grandchildren all need closure. There's some photographs here I will share of a little small... It looks like, to me, a mobile home, maybe, that's been cut down. And it's just like a part of a mobile home. It's what it looks like. Or it could just be a small mobile home, a very small mobile home. Or maybe even just a building with siding on it. Um, interesting facts on the disappearance of Ricky Griffiths. Please share, even if you are not local. Now, these are her words, and I'm just reading this from what I'm seeing here on Facebook. In the first photo, you will see what the Antioch monster called his cabin. He was a renter, and he had a roommate. Two men lived in this. Whether or not you see a cabin, a shack, a shed, this was the last location my brother was seen alive. He was lured here by the monster the night he went missing to meet up with some easy women and was offered free drugs. 
And if, in fact, my brother did relapse, free drugs to an addict or someone struggling with addiction sounds like a winning lottery. Easy women to a single man is a win within itself. Um, these are her words. I'm just repeating. I don't know what the truth of the matter was. Um, I have a photo of the free drugs he was offered along with a lengthy text conversation about a woman in his area who he was supposed to be going there to meet up with. He also included in this conversation with my brother that he hated he has to about the hatred he has for his own mother. The same mother that picked him up and took him to get another phone and dispose of the phone that he had with any evidence regarding my brother's text messages. Within less than 24 hours of finding my brother's car, this monster moves from this shed or cabin and never returns. Within a short period of time after Ricky's disappearance, this cabin shed was completely moved off of the property and placed somewhere else. It is now located in Pulaski County. The, reason, the room that they had built and attached to this shed was torn down and put on a burn pile. So she's insinuating that they burned this part of the house down because it probably had blood evidence or some other DNA evidence there. Um, we will continue to search for my brother. We will not give up, and I will continue to share key facts with the public. It's been, well... Would a dollar sign be what is needed for people to help a grieving family? If we put up a reward, would we get some answers? If anyone can show us where he is, we will keep it confidential. My parents just want answers. His children need answers. I want to salvage what I have left. My children should not have to see their grandparents in pain every day. We just want closure. For those of you who know what happened to my brother and know where he is and have yet to speak up, don't think that you are in the clear. But every opportunity to step forward and clear your name, and I'm begging you to do that. Holding on to facts and truth makes you no better than the coward that ran out of state as soon as he was about to be placed in the hot seat. Just know he didn't leave the state without throwing others under the bus. He slung plenty of names out there. So why are you keeping quiet? It sounds like that this guy, that these other people, maybe that she's insinuating that these other people know something and are covering up for this man. It could be because they're afraid the same thing might happen to them, you know. They don't want to be known as a snitch, and they don't want to, um, you know, get themselves into trouble with the wrong people. I will never forget hanging up the phone with that monster the day my brother went missing and looking at my mother and saying, that's who killed my brother, and no one could tell me anything else. I heard every single lie he tried to spoon-feed me. But I did not take the bait. I knew your game as soon as you took a breath. You took my brother's life. Point your fingers at anyone you want, but the fact is you were the last one to see him alive. We have GPS location from his phone that tagged the two of you in the same location before we got the text message saying that he was stuck in the mud. That whole conversation was your guilt. So quick to throw other people under the bus. So quick to dispose of his cell phone and try to cover up your lies. This man not only hit me up during the first hours I was grieving the loss of my brother, he started dogging him and said that he... He had 15 or so other people trash-talking my brother's name. I have the screenshots of his anger and hatred toward my brother. He is pure evil. 
the fact that you thought people would have your back and you and would not screenshot and send this information in it makes you seem delusional. Ricky was not a threat or a harm to anyone. Nothing but kind words were ever spoken about my brother. I'm not the only one missing him. There's no comparison between the two of you. You're, you are one of the most hated people in the area, and that's why you left Wayne County, and then you ran out. No one has your back. Your name has always been the one to come back as the one. Some say it was over drugs, but I think it was over jealousy and greed. Your mom sat back for years praising my brother's name. It finally got to you. You couldn't stand it any longer. You finally had the chance to take him out, and you did. You knew you could never be the man that Ricky was. You couldn't stand that you could never be the son your mother wished you were. But you didn't win. You may have taken his life, but you didn't win. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to make the math work. Your mother knows what you did, my brother, and hopefully soon your bride-to-be will be aware of the stranger she is bringing around her small child. I hope she finds out what kind of a monster she has set up to live her life with. Um, this is just the sister giving her thoughts on who she thinks. And, and I don't know that the man's name is mentioned anywhere. And I'll just wrap this video up by saying apparently this guy had gone through rehab and had gotten clean and had come back home. And like so many other addicts and so many other people in these small communities, he got back involved with some people who were not um, trying to live that clean, sober lifestyle. And whether or not he got back involved with them or they just happened upon him, lured him in, as these text messages apparently said,